Welcome, everyone. Welcome to our KCLS program, The Art of Zentangle. This program is sponsored by Newcastle Arts Council, City of Newcastle, and For Culture. So I want to give a big shout out to them and thank them for bringing this program to our KCLS um, patrons. Um, I'm going to be putting in some contact information in the chat. We have, we typically have at least one art program a month with them of, of varying topics, and uh, they have a great newsletter that they send out monthly about all of our upcoming programs. So I'll post that in chat as we go along today. Um, this is a, going to be approximately about an hour long class that's going to introduce you to the Zentangle method for mindfulness. And we've got our presenter, Dari Stoltsoff here. Thank you, Dari, for coming. Um, a shout out to KCLS. We have got a ton of Zentangle books, both uh, downloadable and physical books in our library system. So if you are jazzed about what you see here and feel inspired, we have a lot of books to support you in the library system. Just go to kcls.org and type in Zentangle into our catalog and you'll find lots of good stuff. Um, and I think that is most my news. So Dari, I am going to turn it over to you. We can hear a little bit about you and uh, our introduction to Zentangle today. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Vicki. Really appreciate the introduction. Hi, everybody. I am Dari Stolzoff, as Vicki has introduced me. Um, I am a local artist um, in uh, the Seattle area. I'm based out of uh, Issaquah. My studio is in Seattle. Um, I came to the Zentangle Method um, a number of years ago looking for a way to um, uh, bring my art along with me as I moved around and couldn't get to the studio more frequently. So very excited to share with you this method. Um, and so with, with that, we'll get started. Um, I would like to, um, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. If, um, forgive the, the um, if you will, please give me a, um, a moment here to get set up. I want to make sure that um, everything is in play um, properly. So uh, just getting that all put together. One moment here. And there we go. And I had this all practiced and now, of course, <laughs> so this is how it happens. Um, I will be turning off my video screen, but that doesn't mean I've disappeared on you. Um, you're just not going to see me moving around here. What you're going to see instead is my, um, uh, my uh, phone screen. So let's get started. Um, you should see my screen now. Yes? Yeah, that looks good. Okay. It's a bit of a there we go. All right. We are live. Woohoo! <laughs> All right. I'm going to turn off my video. Um, if you, um, so please um, don't be alarmed. Great. Welcome, everyone. Um, I'll be introducing to you today the Zentangle method. It is a method of um, uh, mindful mark making, uh, it is a process. And um, we'll be working on um, pieces of paper that are roughly three and a half by um, five, three and a half inches by three and a half inches square. Um, there's a couple different kinds we got out there for you. Um, the idea here is pick a paper that feels good to you, like tactile. Um, there's some on Amazon, you can get a whole stack of them for like 10 bucks. Um, you can make your own by cutting up pieces of watercolor paper, or if you have cardstock, um, really any, any paper that you like to, to work with um, is totally, <laughs> totally appropriate. The Zentangle method is a series of steps. Um, there's eight steps. There are tools involved. I mentioned the paper. Um, the other tools that you ha should have available to you is an ink pen, a pencil, and um, I don't know if you can see that very well. This is a tortillon or a blender, blending stump, it might also be called. Q-tip is great, so is your finger. <laughs> Fingers work too. Um, so for these eight basic steps um, of the, the method itself, um, you wanna make sure that you have, um, you know, you give yourself some space and some um, uh, a quiet, sorry, give yourself a quiet space um, and a little bit of time and pick up your favorite pen. If you, I happen to use Micron, but there's a whole host of other pens you could use if you'd like. Um, the point is, is pick one you like. Um, the method um, at its most basic practice uses black ink on white paper. Again, three and a half inches square. So with that, let's get started. Um, 
the first uh, step in the method is just to take an opportunity to um, take a, a deep breath in and let it out. <laughs> um, um, express a little gratitude and appreciation for this time that you've set aside for yourselves. I certainly appreciate each and every one of you being here. I'm grateful to be able to share this method with you. Um, give yourself another deep breath and let it out. All right. Let's set aside the pen and the tortillon. Pick up your pencil. I'm using a, this is a tangled branded pencil, but any 2B pencil um, will work. We use this as a tool, not as a writing instrument. So you'll see me hold it very differently, uh, meaning I'm going to hold it from the side. And we're going to go and make um, a dot in each of the corners of your paper really lightly, enough you can so that you can see it. And you'll see that I'm not putting them to the extreme ends of the corner. I'm just putting a mark down somewhere in the vicinity of a corner. <laughs> and then again, take a breath, keep breathing throughout this whole thing. It'll, I'll, I'm going to connect my dots. Again, drawing really lightly. And you'll see me continue to turn the paper. Um, so feel free to make adjustments as you see fit. If it's easier for, for um, the, as, it's, as whatever is easiest for you, excuse me. All right, so we should all have four dots and they should all be connected lightly with a pencil. And then we're, I'm gonna pick a spot somewhere on this, this long edge. And I'm gonna start here and I'm gonna, I'm gonna land I don't know, somewhere over here, I'm gonna kind of traverse. <laughs> All right, I landed over there. Ooh, it's roughly halfway, um, doesn't matter. It can be anywhere on that. And then from this place, I'm gonna travel across the page um, or across the tile. Uh, I think I'm gonna land over there. And from here, I'm gonna land over there. Okay, kind of a Z shape not intentional. It is what it is. <laughs> All right. Um, and this, the four dots are how we enter the space. The border here that we're created here is, is kind of setting up our setting up our workspace for ourselves. And this in the middle is referred to as a string. And because I've written it um, or drawn it very, very lightly, it's just a suggestion. It's how we break up the space to start thinking about where we're going to put things. So the next step is to pick up your pen. Um, I'm using a my, Microno 5. And if, oh, by the way, if you have any questions um, and you need to um, get my attention, please put the information in the chat and um, Vicki will get it um, relayed to me. So um, please feel free to, to um, absolutely ask questions. We got one request if you could show this to me again. Um, she said she can't quite see your paper. Okay, let's see if I bring it closer. Can you see that? Yeah, that's helpful. Thank you. Yeah, you see, it was draw drawn very lightly, so I apologize. <laughs> Again, um, it's meant just to help organize the space. I'm gonna turn this. Um, I'm gonna choose this. I'm gonna choose. So the next step, in, or the next um, item, is to pick one of your four spaces. Doesn't matter which one. Um, I'm gonna use this one here. And I'm gonna make, I'm, gonna start, I'm not gonna start at the corner here. I'm gonna start a little bit further down. I'm gonna make a basic, really basic C shape, kind of a lump. See the lump? Let's see, I'll move the screen down. Pardon me. Sorry, hang on, I apologize. That, that would be great. I think it would be good to get a little closer. Yeah, that's what I wanted to do. Apologies. Yeah. There we go. All right. There we go. Thank you for your pants. My articulated arm isn't very articulated. <laughs> there we go. A little bit better there. Can I hopefully you yeah, can see that? that, that is yeah. Better. Okay. 
So, so I made my first C shape here. I'm going to move a little bit further down the line and make another C shape. And the idea here is that um, I'm going to fill this one in. Fill this one in. I'm being I'm being a little bit. Um, I want to be mindful of our time, so I will go back and fill these in um, more um, more fully. But for the sake of getting this demonstration, I want to make sure that we I get this all filled out for you. So just repeating the C shape using this, uh, the, the string and the border as my guide. So here I'm just gonna, I'm gonna follow this string. I'm not gonna go all the way down. Just, I'm gonna make a little, travel a little bit here. And I think of these little lumps as being like rocks or ladybugs. And I'm being very quick about this. Normally, I would, like I said, would take the time to make, to make each of these fully inked in and dark. And I'll go back and do that when I'm done here. I'm on a Zoom call. Sorry? Oh, that's somebody else. Okay. And I've got this funky little corner you know, I've kind of given myself some space in between each of these things. I've got this funky little corner, so I'm just going to bridge the gap there. And I'm going to turn my tile. It's a little easier for me to make a C shape if I can actually draw a C. Whatever works for you. I'm going to travel, keep traveling with these little lumps that I'm making. Breathe in between if you can. Keep going. These little guys are marching along. Okay, and one more. I'm gonna kind of squeak it in here. Following. Uh, we, we had a question. Are you following the Z or just freestyling? I think you're following that light. Z. I am following the light Z. I'm not freestyling. Um, the, the point of this string is to help guide me um, in, in the section that I want to be working in for this particular pattern. So once you've traveled all the way around the space like this, the next um, step in this pattern is to do, um, sometimes you'll hear it as called an aura. I like to think of it in terms of a mirror. I'm going to, um, I'm back where I started again. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna draw a line that echoes or mirrors this, C, this smaller sheet, C shape that I um, filled in. I'm gonna do that on each one of these guys. And don't worry about you know, how far away it is from the, um, the lumps that you've made that um, the idea is to um, uh, travel um, around each of them that you've made and just create an echo or a mirror or an aura of that, of that shape. Again, using kind of the C shape, so it should be fairly C shape looking. <laughs> There you go, and just continue along. If your um, if your ladybugs or your rocks or your lumps here are fairly close together, you might find yourself connecting these initial auras. They might touch other, or they might overlap. That is okay. There's no right or wrong to this. This is your way. Oh, 
kind of traveled a little. So like this, for example, I'm just, I just choose to meet it there. I just, and that I'm gonna leave it there. I've traveled all the way around and we're gonna just repeat. Now, I have a decision to make here. I'm just going to, I'm not gonna, um, I'm going to start here and draw another one and happens to connect that one, that's fine. Um, and I'm gonna start a little further up here on this one to aura or mirror this one and it happens to connect there, that's fine. Um, I'm not gonna be able to cut in here. So I'm just gonna stop right there. And we'll continue along here in this fashion of, of echoing or, or mirroring or oaring this shape. And I'm going fairly quickly. Um, and for uh, and so it can feel a bit rushed, for which I apologize. Um, normally, you would take every opportunity to to take a breath and go as slow as you need to go, and just really enjoy having the ink fall out onto the page, uh, onto the piece of paper. This is where having nice paper is super super awesome, as is a good ink pen. I'm not pressing very hard. That's the other thing is if your hand's starting to cramp, um, there's two ways to handle that. You can um, you can clench your non-dominant hand and try to continue to draw and you'll find you can't clench your pen at the same time. <laughs> it's very interesting. Um, so if you need to relax your hand, please relax your hand. This is not an exercise in strength. Overlap there. I'm going to start here. One of the benefits of turning your tile is that you actually have to relax your hand. And you can see that I'm just echoing the shapes that's had gone before, where it makes sense for me to be able to continue. I'll continue. You can see that my lines are not particularly straight um, or steady. That is how I tend, that's how I do my marks. That is part of what makes this mark making mine and not yours. Um, we'll continue filling in this space. Keep going. I'm gonna go fairly quickly here. Feel free to take your time. If you do not complete this section at this time, that is okay. For I want to get um, this next round done, and then I'll show you the next step. So you can absolutely go back and uh, fill in and continue, or even better, start a new one. Continue to go. Take a breath. Keep breathing as you move through this. You're letting the ink get soaked up into the page. Continue making these little. Hopefully, you can see that, right? Okay. So, if you um, if you have more space to fill in, awesome. You can fill in that space. Um, if you are all full, that is cool. You, um, if you have like a smaller space and you didn't, um, you could you uh, have finished all the auras there. That's awesome. The next step is to set aside your pen for a moment and pick up your pencil, your graphite pencil. And we're going to do a little bit of shading. Now, the shading um, that's done here is um, not representational. Uh, so it's not at all based in any kind of um, uh, art theory. <laughs> Where is the light coming from? What's in front? What's behind? It's merely um, an opportunity to add a little drama. So one way to add drama is uh, to just lay down, I'm using the side of the pencil and laying down quite heavily, just a strip along the board border here that I'm using. And I'm gonna turn my tile and I'm gonna do this little tiny section of the border here. And then I'm gonna follow my lumps or my ladybugs 
See that I'm really trying to kind of lay it in there good, right? And all the way around. Just retracing the string that I laid in with this graphite. And this is just one way to shade this particular uh, uh, pattern. I'll, um, I'll share with you the, the name of it in just a second. Then you can set, set aside your pencil and pick up your paper blender, Q-tip, or your finger. If you want to use your finger, it gets a little dirty, um, but you can just kind of smear the graphite into the space. I happen to like using a, um, a blending um, stub or a tortillon because I can, um, I can reach the little corners better than my finger can. So again, laying the, laying the tortillon down very flat. And just um, working in the graphite, kind of inviting the graphite out into this wider space all the way around. So you can kind of see how it kind of just kind of smudges in a very controlled area. That's because I can use this tip of this blending stump in that way. You don't need to press very hard. You're just trying to move the graphite, kind of slide it across the page, uh, across the paper. In this, those little spaces. Okay, a little bit of drama. All right, take an opportunity to hold the card away from you and, and take a look at it. Turn it this way and that. You might see some things that you want to change or add to. That's great. Um, under um, In your own practice, you can absolutely take the time to make those adjustments. Um, but I'd like to move on to the next pattern. And to do that, I'm going to pick another section. I'm going to pick, um, let's see, which one am I going to do next? OK, so before I move on, this pattern here is called Crescent Moon. Um, the names of the uh, patterns, I'll write it down for you. The names of the patterns in the, the Zentangle method um, don't have a lot of definition. They don't define what you see. And that is by design. So crescent moon, you can see that. That's what this pattern is here. Um, the next one we're going to do is, um, it's called, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, it's called Halibah. Okay. That's a G, sorry. <laughs> I'm going to use this bigger section here, I think, and using my string as my reference point. Again, I have my string here and my string here in this part of the border. Um, yours might be, um, will, might, will definitely be a different shape. That's fine. I'm going to pick a spot. Oh, I'm going to pick a spot right here. I'm just going to put a little dot there. I don't know if you can see it, just so you can see where I'm going to travel to. I'm going to travel across to this part of the string from A to B. Um, you can see my um, line is a little bit wiggly, but it's as straight as I'm going to make it. <laughs> so I'm going to, um, again, just draw a, a line from one side to the other side. And then I'm going to go back and I'm going to echo that or aura it with a second line. And I'm going to turn my tile and I'm going to put, so I'm going to start over here and I'm going to go over here somewhere. I think I'll land there. And I'm going to make an aura of that. And keep turning my tile to make it easy for my hand. I'm right-handed, so I like to I like to manipulate the pen uh, from top to bottom on the right side. So I'm going to turn the tile to suit that. It makes it easier for me to move. I, uh, my next line, I think, is going to go from here over here, but I've got this one in the way. So I'm going to stop here and pick up on the other side. 
travel to the other to the other string. So from the border to the string in this regard. And I'm going to echo that. Don't worry about what how straight the line is or is not, or how even the space is between the two lines, or if this one's the same as that one. The idea here is just to keep um, keep making this set of marks. So I'm going to go over here. Make another one. That one's a little narrow, for example. I'm going to run here. I've got two to cross now because I want to go all the way over to my string. So I'm just going to continue to start and stop whenever I meet another line that's already there. So you can see that, right? Kind of, I'm not crossing it. I'm going sort of going behind, like a little road behind it. Finish that one. And I think. I'll do one here. Start, stop, start, stop. Start, and stop, start, and stop. Again, using my reference points here. And four of that. And you can do this as densely, <coughs> pardon me, as densely as you'd like to. You could put as many of these pickup sticks or planks or toothpicks, however you want to describe them. Um, you can put in as many or as few as you'd like. Stop there, pick up, stop over there. Again, just echoing the line that's already there. Not really paying attention to the design over here. I'm just focusing on this space over here. In there and I'm going to do one more. Go from here, stop, start, stop, start. And you can get super wonky with this uh <laughs> with this um set of marks. You can make really wavy lines, you can make super jagged lines, what it works. Um it's a very flexible um uh set of steps for sure. So I'm going to set aside my pen at this point. A couple different ways that you can um, add graphite to this one. We can do exactly the same thing we did to this section, which is just outline the space that we've put this particular tangle in or this pattern. Um, I like to be a little fancier, and I like to put in um, a line of graphite on I guess what you could call the upper layer. So this is this guy here is behind these two items. So I'm going to do a little bit here, and a little bit here. Completely arbitrary. Not really paying attention to. Oh well, if the light was shining a certain way, it needs to be here. The idea is emphasizing what's on top. So just picking that top layer. Set aside my pencil for now. You can do spaces like this, or you can do a continuous line, whatever, whatever suits you, but pick one. I've done two different ones because I want to demonstrate it, but normally I would, um, if I was just going to do these individual ones, I would do it for all of them. Um, but I want to show you two options. So again, using the side of my tortillon or blending stump or Q-tip, I'm not doing this, I'm doing this. You can see that the graphite, you know, slides across the paper really easily. It's one of those I really like about working with the, this particular um, type of paper from the Zentangle um, company. It's actually a um, printing paper from France that, they, that they've had uh, customized. Okay. So this guy, this pattern here is called Halaba. And the idea with Halaba is that you have this concept of what's on top and what's behind, this idea of going behind um, uh, a particular um, set of marks. 
and this will this will show up repeatedly in any pattern that you want to uh, that you will uh, come across in your Zentangle uh, practice. Okay, let's we've got two more sections. Let's take a look at um, let's see, pick another. We'll pick a third section, and let's see. I think I will pick. I will pick this one. I'm going to set aside my pencil and my blending stump and pick my pen up again. Again, I'm using a Micron 05, so it's fairly, fairly uh, wide tip here. I don't know if you can see that, right? You can get really thin ones if you want. Um, lots of variety out there, but um, typically, again, this, this practice is in black and white, black ink, white paper, with a little bit of graphite thrown in for fun. <laughs> All right, so for this section here, I'm going to start with, I'm going to turn this a little bit. I'm going to start with a dot, and I'm going to aura around and around and around. I'm going to go, that's twice, and we'll make that, and I'm going to connect it. Super simple. I'm going to make a bigger one over here because I like to go big. Go big or go home. Once, twice, and I'm going to finish it. I'm going to do it again over here and make it a different size. Once, twice, and finish that. They're, they're rather orb orb like in their shape they're not circles they're certainly not perfect the idea is just to make this spiral shape and complete it or connect it to itself i love my bagels it reminds me of bagels uh, some people have called them snail shells and i want to fit this one into this little tiny spot here so i'm going to go super small and using what we did over here in Halaba by going behind the um, behind one of the previous uh, previous shapes I'd put in there, I'm going to do that right here just to show what you can do with this. Once I'm going to stop, pick it up as if it's coming out the other side. Stop, kind of tucked in there. Can you see that? Okay, people. I'll do it again. Um, let me give myself another another one to get tucked in behind here. And you can go around and around as as many times as you'd like to. Uh, I just happen to make it three because that's a number I happen to like. <laughs> All right, so let's do this behind again. I'm going to tuck one in here. I'm going to go once, twice. I'm kind of kissing this one. But I am going to stop there. Pick my pen up. Continue around, continue behind this guy, come out the other side and kind of connect it. I hope you can see that. Here, I'll switch my tip. Can you see I kind of tucked it in behind? Yeah, that looks good. Yeah. So you can, um, you can make this as super dense as you'd like to, or um, if you like it fairly open with all this extra space, you can leave it open. This this particular pattern is called Pantom. And yes, it's French. Um, that's the name of this pattern here. Um, the This is super flexible. It fills space super quickly. Um, but it also has some lovely, um, it's it's pretty lovely when it's uh, got these little, a little bit of space to breathe in between each of these little shapes. And then to, to shade this one, I like to I like to play with the ones that are behind, the ones that appear to be on top. So I'll just put a little bit of graphite along those. And since those are the only two I have, that's the only graphite I'm going to put in there. <laughs> um, but I may go back after we're done here and, and fill in some more. But the idea is to um, give a little bit of drama 
you might have more, you might have fewer. Um, it's There's no set number that has to go in here. I just happen to like fewer in this particular place. So that, again, this one is called Printemps here. And that leaves us for, <coughs> pardon me, um, this last section here. In this last section, I'm going to do, or we're going to do, yeah, I think we'll do that. We're gonna do something that looks like a grid-ish. Um, my grids get super wonky because I can never, I never draw them, you know, at a, a, a proper 90 degree angle. That's awesome. I think it's kind of cooler if I don't. So I'm gonna start um, in this section here and I'm going to travel from this side to that side. Um, I'm, gonna go, I'm gonna start here. Just, and I'm gonna make another one a little further away. Again, the idea being of echoing the one behind both that I just made previously. And let's see, another here. And I think I have enough room to sneak one in up there. All right, so just making a couple parallel, a uh, couple lines that are parallel to one another roughly. And then let's see, I'm gonna, <coughs> uh, I'm gonna start on one of these here. I think I'll start here. And I wanna travel across and through this line to that border. So I'm gonna draw a straight line-ish from the string to the border here. And I think I'll put another one over here. Again, string to the border. Now your space might be a little bit different. So you might be going from string to string, that is okay. I'm gonna do another one here. And I think I have room to tuck one in over here as well. Okay. And then much in the same way that we filled in spaces or filled in, filled in the shape here of these little lumps or rocks, we're gonna fill in some spaces in here. So what I'm gonna do is I think I'll give myself another line here for a reference point. I'm gonna fill in this guy right here. I think my pen's running out of ink. Look at that. Don't forget to breathe. And then this corner, I wanna do, I wanna do effectively every other one. So I think I'm gonna do this little piece over here, skipping the one next. Having skipped this one, I want to do this one. And then in the next row, I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to fill in this guy. And again, take a moment to breathe. Be mindful of where you're putting your pen down. Is that really where you want to be? And I'm going very quickly, so my pen is um, not having an opportunity to really soak the paper. But take the take a take a moment to really dig in there and, and let the fill out the shape really well. I'm gonna skip this one and move to the next one. I hope you can see this okay. Vicki, are there any questions in the chat? Well, as a matter of fact, yeah, we do have one. Uh, can you use other colors? Uh, sh um, she writes, I like purple, or is that not Zentangle if you use color? Color is absolutely okay. Um, the, the method was based on black and white. Again, the idea being very, as simple as you possibly can get it. If simple for you is purple, purple it is. <laughs> Um, but generally, when you see um, Zentangle, uh, the results of Zentangle um, uh, practice or methods, you'll see it as um, in black and white. There is um, a whole 
amazing set of art out there that people have um, come up with where they use uh, colored pens, they use color pencils, they use uh, colored backgrounds on their paper, watercolor and ink and all sorts of really wonderful luscious things. And we and that's generally referred to as Zentangle inspired art because it's using very familiar patterns uh, and the process, this my, this method that, that I'm teaching you of being of, um, that, that is the Zentangle method. It's using that method to, to create these lovely pieces. However, the method itself is not focused on creating art. It's created, it's, it's focused, uh, the focus is meant to be putting pen to paper one stroke at a time. Um, if you happen to come out with a, uh, at the end of your session with a beautiful piece of artwork, that's awesome. It could, it could absolutely stand alone that way. Um, but uh, the, uh, there will be times where you've created tiles where you won't like them. So set them aside <laughs> and, and start another one. Um, but yes, you can absolutely use color. And we have a question about, can you give a little background about how Zentangle started? Like happy to do that. Yeah, you bet. There's a great story there. <laughs> so the story goes that um, the founders, uh, Rick, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, Rick, uh, oh, I'm sorry, I'm, my <clears throat> Rick and Maria, Maria Thomas is a uh, well-known calligraphy artist um, in um, Rhode Island and her partner, Rick Roberts. He is a um, kind of a jack of all trades. He's been in technology. He's a musician. He's done all sorts of things. Anyway, uh, the story goes that Rick is also, well, and Rick is also a practicing Zen Buddhist. So um, the concept of Meditation and mindfulness is very much, you know, in his his realm of, of concern and focus. And one day he wanted lunch and he went upstairs to Maria's studio where she was working <clears throat> and knocked on the door and said, hey, Maria, I want to, I'm, you know, I'm ready for lunch. Are you? And he noticed that Maria was super hyper intensively focused on her work. Didn't even hear him, didn't hear the knock, didn't hear the door open, heard nothing. So she's super focused. And it occurred to Rick in that, in observing his partner, that what where she was, was where all, all meditation attempts to lead to, which is that, that hyper-focused sense um, uh, where time has stopped and you've lost track of where you are. You're just in the moment doing what you're doing. In, the, in uh, Maria's case, she was, she was working on a, um, a particular piece. And uh, he said, well, how can, we, how, can we, how can we bottle that? How can we get to that? And with Maria's um, expertise and background in art and um, Rick's expertise in practice and methodology, <clears throat> excuse me, they came up with this concept of what they called Zentangle. And it's, um, you know, super simple on purpose, black and white, as I mentioned, super portable, the, the small space here, and, um, and highly, highly malleable in the, um, in, or highly portable, when where you can, where, where, where can you whip one of these out <laughs> and work on it? Um, for example, uh, many people who have discovered this method use it for um, not just for that hyper-focused sense of um, mental acuity, but also as a form of uh, uh, controlling uh, other um, ailments like uh, insomnia or anxiety or um, uh, other, yes, uh, I mentioned uh, insomnia Um uh, anxiety. Uh, there's another one. I'm missing it. Um, oh, blood pressure, regulating your blood pressure. Um, and there's been great success in that. Anyway, um, Rick and Maria decided to um, share this with a couple of us in their, in their community. And they're like, oh, wow, this is cool. We got to do more of this. And so it kind of grew organically out of that. Hopefully that. Um, 
And it's, it's merely an attempt to get into that headspace where time, all time has stopped and you truly enjoy what you're doing and you're, um, you've completely lost track of where you are, who you are and what you're doing, <laughs> but you're, you're fully present in the moment. Okay, good question. Uh, so we finished this, I finished uh, filling in my, my little parquet here um, and I'm gonna put my pen down and pick up my pencil again. And I'm just going to slash through here with the graphite. Again, I'm not point down because I don't want to scratch the paper. I want to lay the graphite into or onto the surface. This one. So you can see I'm just hitting where the corners meet. Set that aside, pick up my blending stump or tool of choice, and smear it here, there. When you fill in these darker areas, the ink uh, might not yet have fully dried. So sometimes you have to be a little bit aware of that so that you don't scrub, <laughs> scrub the layer of paper off the top. Uh, I just did that up there, for example. It's okay. It's okay. Okay, so that, there's that. This pattern right here is called Knight's Bridge. And each one of these patterns um, has a, an interesting backstory to it. Um, Rick and Maria travel quite a bit and they're always um, attuned to wherever pattern, wherever they see patterns. And um, in this case, they were in a church, I think it was a church in uh, England, in London. Uh, and they were looking at the flooring, which was a um, marble flooring that was in this kind of black and white, <laughs> black and white pattern. And they, um, the thinking was, I wonder what that would look like uh, on paper. So um, they fondly named it after visiting Knightsbridge. Uh, so that's where that one comes from. This one, Hollabaugh, comes from um, uh, actually Rick and Marie's uh, son-in-law. He uh, is a carpenter, and um, one day their daughter walked into his studio, and there were boards like strewn everywhere on the floor, one on top of the other, kind of like pickup sticks. And so she took that image away from the studio and went back and put it on paper. And that's how uh, and named it Halaba in, in honor of her husband, which I thought was kind of cute. Uh, Crescent Moon, um, the idea was that these lumps here were um, reminiscent of or evocative of a uh, crescent moon. So at a particular stage, probably could be traced back to an actual date and time. <laughs> and then Puntop actually comes from another of um, Rick and Maria's travels. They named it Puntop because the flowers in um, near the Louvre were in bloom during their trip uh, that they were visiting. And uh, they were, uh, you know, this luscious color and smell. Um, and again, they took it back uh, to their to their hotel, hotel and figured out how to put it on paper and came up with print top. So little hallmarks along the way. So this is your very first Zentangle tile. Take an opportunity to take a look at it again, lift it up, hold it at arm's length and turn it every which way. Now, one of the things you'll notice about Zentangle and working in on a tile in particular, there is no up nor down. You can keep turning it and turning it and you might find something different, something you might wanna tweak, something you might wanna to shade a little bit more, but give yourself that, that opportunity to put some distance between you and the tile and it will make a world of difference. Um, and then lastly, uh, flip your tile over, and we're going to put today's date on it, which is um, the 6th, and sign it. Okay. I do this, uh, I do this everywhere um, I whenever I create a Zentangle tile because I like to kind of um, go back and revisit what's that I've done before. Flip your tile back over and find a spot where you can put 
your initials. I'm going to squeeze mine in right here. My name's Dari Stolzoff, so I will put in T and S. You can get super creative with how you want to how you want to sign the front of your tiles. Um, it's commonly referred to as a chop. <laughs> um, I don't know if you've seen uh, some Oriental prints. There'll be like a little red, little red um, square of um, it's Cinnabon um, that will have a mark in it. Chinese characters. It's called a chop. It's actually a stamp. That's what this is meant to kind of evoke. They're a revoke. And you have officially completed a Zentangle tile. Take a moment to appreciate what you've done. I hope you've enjoyed our time here. Um, I would love to talk more about any with um, any other questions that people have. Um, I'm going to stop sharing my screen at this time. Um, I will say that if you didn't finish any one of the sections, because we did go fairly quick, please take the time to go back and do that. Um, this is meant to be an introduction. So we, um, I wanted to cover these four patterns and the shape and the method. Um, and, but it's by no means done until you say it's done. <laughs> Thank you. So I'll stop sharing and I'll go back to my video.